lives. All right. Hello, 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 everybody. This is Tiffany with the private room. And today we are live with my handsome co-host right here, Fred Bryant. Um, we are also waiting for Miss Ro P. Hill to join us. Um, we have a couple of announcements going on. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with the first announcement of the night. The first announcement of the night is that you're live. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was the first announcement. Okay, Tiffany, are you laughing at me? I'll see her. <laughs> um, the second announcement is, is that this Saturday, July 29th, we are hosting our first live and intimate with our guests. So not just live with one another on the panel, but we are inviting you out this Saturday, July 29th to the Concord area to join us for a live taping of Relationships and Sex Talks. We are going to have um, Mike Avery, who's going to be our photographer and our videographer who is going to be out. So big shout out to Mike for joining us and being a part of the crew. Um, and so the only thing that we're going to be missing is you. So this Saturday, in Concord, North Carolina, we are going to be taping live. You get to be a part of the audience. You get to be a part of the discussion. Later on today, I will be sharing what, what we're, the topic is going to be for this coming Saturday. So if you are interested in coming out and being a guest with us, joining us in the conversation, having a couple of drinks with us, and just, you know, mingling and getting entangled with the crew, then come on out this Saturday. You can look me up. Tiffany Sunshine Brown, you can talk to any of our panelists that are on here tonight about the event. They can give you the link to go and get your ticket. You can also find the event and the details on our Facebook page, The Private Room with Tiffany. So that's The Private Room WTB. So The Private Room WTB. Go under the events tab and you will see the Eventbrite link. Uh-oh, we got a knock on the door. I wonder who that is. I wonder who that is. It might be a stripper. Or <laughs> might be a stripper. Oh, we got a stripper, y'all. We got a stripper. <laughs> Come up here, baby. We got Miss. Look at her. She about to go right across me. I am. Look at her. Just she just want to put her butt in my in my I face, y'all. She just want to put her butt in my face. <laughs> yeah, she came yeah, in here I with can, her. I can yeah, I can't. She, she yeah. got something. She got something. Was that a frosty? Yeah. Yummy. Yummy. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. He made some chicken on the grill, and that, that chicken is good. Well, nobody told me Well, I didn't know until like an hour ago. So, yeah. So when you get hungry, since you got the okay. And we got some watermelon, got some wine. And y'all will meet my boo because he is on his way. Okay. Good. We're so, going to meet the boo. We're going to meet the boo. So we have <laughs> black folk meals today chicken and watermelon. Mm -hmm. Chicken, watermelon. We got some. What else you got? Chicken and watermelon. Amen. What, what'd you say, Makisha? I said, hey, amen. Chicken and watermelon. <laughs> it's good, girl. It's good. Chicken. I'm and over here doing steak and shrimp. And chicken breast and pasta, Alfredo and green beans. Mm -hmm. All that tonight? That's a Monday. <laughs> Girl, my man is retired in the A. Like they eat like I don't know what. Oh, okay. All right. That explains it. She got feed, she got feed him. Because he he's retired NBA. That means he, he, he gotta be active. He gotta be active. <laughs> right. <laughs> what Makisha said. We gotta we gotta make sure that he's active. Yeah, we're gonna right. we're gonna ask him when he come on if he's active. Right. I go, um, you wanna eat shrimp, you wanna have steak, you wanna have pasta, you wanna have green beans. He was like, uh, everything. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna okay. ask him because that was a, a prerequisite for you last the last episode. So we're gonna ask him, are you active? Do you do stuff? Do you go out? <laughs> he does. He does. <laughs> and he's a lot younger than me. I'm just saying, oh. you, you ready for the family to meet him? Because you know, we the family that right. stay still. Stay he's straight. <laughs> he's straight. He's straight. Okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. So we are here. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit. I feel I feel like Ro is cut off a little bit. Oh, she said she said she all right. There we go. We got all of us in there. We got a whole menage a trois going on right now. Okay. 
Oh, why he saying? taking sips in this in this camera right here. Oh, let me see. Oh, because that camera is on. There you go. There you go. Now we can't see you. <laughs> we can see you there. Oh, that's the one that's. Oh, I'm good with it. <laughs> All right, y'all. So our topic for the night. What's the topic for tonight? <laughs> Inventory. Oh, take an inventory. inventory. Yeah, take an inventory is the topic for the night. Y'all excuse me. I had my evening nap and I don't think I'm awake yet. So our topic for tonight is taking inventory. So real quickly, we're not going to go into this whole spiel about who everybody is. Right now we have our special guest and she's going to be uh, doing a poem for us to start us off on Saturday is the Gory. <laughs> <laughs> the gorgeous Miss Fiona. So, Miss Fiona, can you come on so we can see your gorgeous face? Tell everybody who you are, what you do, all that good stuff. My camera's on. You turned your camera off. I know. Can you not see me on the other camera? I don't. Y'all can't see us sitting on the couch. I, no, I don't. Not no more. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me figure it out. Hold on. I could. Okay. Well, there you go. Can you see us now? No, no? ma'am. Okay, wait, wait. Okay, what about now? Mm -mm. Okay, Tiffany, you can't see us either? Mm -mm. That's weird. So what I can see I you on, like, on a smaller box on the bottom, but I don't see you on the main screen, no. Okay, that's because I have it on speaker with you, so that's why. So as long as you can see that we're here, you can see that, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. All right, cool. All right. So, um, Fiona, tell yes. us who you are. Tell us what you do. And um, Miss Fiona is going to be one of our special guests on Saturday. So let everybody know who you are and tell them your social media before we go into our topic for tonight. Well, what it do do boo boos. I am Fiona B. I am a writer, a creative all around. I sing. Um, I tell jokes. I'm quite funny if you get to know me. Um, I am a poet, uh, rightfully so. Uh, and yes, I'm happy to be here this evening. I'm from Columbia, South Carolina, by way of Pennsylvania. Happy to be in Charlotte now and connect with beautiful people and have great conversation. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Fiona. So the reason why you and I actually started talking is because I, I saw your poem or your poetry, you were doing it live on your Instagram. And so I'm gonna be quite honest. First, I saw that she was light bright like me and you were sexy. So that was the original reason why I stopped to look at you. But then <laughs> you started talking some really deep stuff and I could see that it was personal as well. So you were sharing a very personal poem. Um, and so I said, you know what? I've got to connect with her. We've got to get her in the mix some kind of way um, with relationships and sex talk. So here we are. You are on with us tonight um, for, for a little bit. And then we are going to see you on Saturday as part of our discussion. But then you're going to start us off with one of your poems. So yeah. I'll be announcing the topic for um, Saturday before we get off today, hopefully. <laughs> I will. And um, we will, we were, we're going to, we're just going to get ready for a good weekend. Um, it's going to be a very intimate evening. Um, it's going to be a couple of our, our panelists, there are plus ones and a few more people. So it's going to be a very intimate evening. So we're inviting our guests that are in the Charlotte Concord area, that if you want to come out and be a part of the live audience, part of the live panel. So that means not only you're going to be hearing, hearing us talk all night, you are going to be able to be a part of the conversation as well. I would just let a little, yeah. I am sponsoring two people if they contact you. Oh, look okay. at that. I don't, I don't want to say look at God because the kind of stuff we're going to be talking about, but. Okay, so we're going to stop there for a moment. So we were just saying the other day how we felt <laughs> weird about saying, yes, daddy, hey, daddy, okay, big daddy, all that kind of stuff during sex. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not calling nobody daddy, poppy, nothing. I don't that. like that. <laughs> The other you thing said, is, oh, who said, who said it? Who said it? Makisha, I said, I hate that. Do yes. not ask me to call you daddy. 
right yeah. and we don't want not my dad i do not want to lay with my daddy in bed that's, <laughs> that's what i thought i said the same thing i was like when i say daddy i was like no, my daddy no. face pops up in my head and it freaks me out so it's you like no, not not yeah i'm All not right. supposed to be in the bed doing it to my daddy i'm right. saying and then I'm like, is that some perverted shit? Like, is you trying to fuck your daughter? Like, what? What's that about? Yeah. Well, yeah. He said, put a Z on it. That's still too close for me. He said, yeah. daddy, daddy. No, no we, we, we ain't doing that. We're not doing that in the bread. No. <laughs> they ain't referencing a father figure. Right. Right. And then I feel kind of bad when I say, oh, God. And I'm just like, oh, wait, no, no. I don't got oh, no, no, God, God, no, God, no, no, because him but, is God. God said we is made in his image. Therefore, uh -huh. we are God. Therefore, so when you saying, oh, God, yes, give him his props. You know what I'm saying? Because God is putting it down at the moment. I mean, I feel the same. Uh, I'm going to move uh, over here because we about to get uh, struck. No, you're not. Uh, That's the truth. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 oh, no. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna let you have that one. Okay, okay. okay. so <laughs> <laughs> so Fred <laughs> said, okay. if somebody contacts me, yeah. yeah, if someone contacts me, Tiffany Sunshine Brown, and you say that you want to be in the audience, you want to participate, you want to be in the house with all of my sexy friends here, then contact me, and he is going to sponsor two tickets. So. Yay, Fred! Yay. He must want to. He must want to private dance after the podcast today. He must want to private dance. Let me see if we got some lingerie in here. <laughs> Let's see if we got some lingerie here from the PR collection. Yeah, we do, don't we? We do. Yeah, we do. You gonna try on your piece before we leave? Not for the world, but yeah. Oh, <laughs> you got to pay me, goddamn. You understand? What I'm saying? You want to see all of this beauty in this lingerie? You got the beauty. All the beautiness right here. I am always available but never for you. <laughs> that being said, we have something special for y'all. We have number 11, and I will let Miss Rowe tell you what that is while I am getting it set up. Oh, <laughs> set up. oh okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, back on the spot. You're going back on the spot. Um, And so, you know, sometimes when you're in love, it can be a little toxic because you do some things that you would do and act like you're on drugs. Okay. So, yeah. This like, this is number say. 11. <laughs> toxic. By your Rope, 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 DJ Kane on the track, boy. It's something about the way that my body calls your name. Got me feeling and going insane. Every time I touch your bullet, I get a rush. Just one hit of you, I can't get enough. You came along and you set my soul on fire. Feel so good. Feel 
Just two years ago, so, <laughs> so yeah, my, my numbers is low. Okay. Okay. Hey, not nice. prepared. Not we're prepared. not. We're not. It's okay. It's okay. I'm learning. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead with that question out there. Okay, panelists. Um, do y'all talk numbers before we get to our topic? Do we? Do you no. talk numbers to your to your get to your? No. Does that ever become a conversation where you're like, how many people have you been with? I don't know. Oh, no. body count. Yeah. Yeah. No. What you think? I don't shy away from telling my truth, but I know a couple of people who are afraid of telling their truth. Mm-hmm. Y'all remember your truth? Where are we all going I, I, I don't. I don't know. It's, it's, don't a, round, it's a rounded off figure. <laughs> yeah, I haven't like kept a book or anything, so I, I don't know. What I about used to keep a book in my twenties, but I gave up on that shit. Fuck that. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> no. I don't know. I ain't worried about it. Nah. It's not until you don't remember don't, somebody. Well, back in my young, when I was younger, in my twenties, I would have guys ask me that when I was younger. But I would say, I would say over twenty five years old. I don't think anyone's asked me since then. Really? Yeah. No. What about you, Fiona? Are you discussing numbers with anybody? No. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. What about you, Barry? Huh? Yeah. I was talking to Barry. He's on no. the, there he goes. I, I definitely did not do numbers. Uh, first of all, I probably wouldn't even know the numbers. <laughs> um, yeah. And my numbers are probably higher since becoming polyamorous than they were. Like, I didn't really date much when I was younger i i married my first so yeah uh, so my numbers were low in my 20s and um yeah so the answer is no okay <laughs> barry said i'm i'm in charge now so my numbers have gone up <laughs> yeah i I'm, I'm gonna be very honest i was not a very good girl in my 20s. So, um, no, we're not talking body count. <laughs> I was being good. Like, it was great. But I was not taking numbers. You know, I wasn't, I don't, I didn't have a little black book where I was just like, yeah. I know. Yeah. The only reason why I knew is because I've been married like 25 years. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew like who and where. Mm-hmm. So it'd be, it'd be yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know somebody who's got it. You trying to? I'm seeing about what's going on. 
in the 30s. Okay, okay. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I was a little wild. So, um, you know, we're not going to talk about body count over here. I'm a free spirit. You were not wild. You're a free spirit. <laughs> free spirit. I like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now that we've talked about my, my, my days, my days. Um, okay. So the topic for tonight, and um, Ms. McKeisha says she's got a story for us, and I'm waiting to hear the story. So we're talking about self inventory tonight. So I know Fiona, Fiona, you can't stay on long with us tonight. So hopefully you will just be so enamored with this conversation that you will stay on longer. But we know that you are limited tonight. So we want to make sure that we hear you tonight because you're going to be there Saturday. So we want to hear as much as we can from you. So if I keep calling on you, that's why I'm not. I'm, you're not like the student in the front of the class. It's just I want to make sure that we take full advantage of you being with on for us tonight. So um, we're talking about self inventory tonight, y'all, and. Um, we have one, Fiona, are you single? I am. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, um, single folks on here. So we're going to start with y'all. We're going to start with y'all because y'all, y'all single. Okay. Yeah. So when it comes to inventory, are y'all taking self inventory right now before y'all get into another relationship? Absolutely. Okay. And this is, and this is the thing that I said, I, I don't know if we said before last. Mm -hmm. That's why I was talking to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you have to take a self inventory. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, baggage, luggage, hmm. whatever you want to call it. Um, if you don't understand where you are um, within yourself, uh, when if you've suffered from any type of trauma, if you've suffered from any type of crises, and it, it, it could be from a relative, it could be from a, a partner, it could be from anything. But if you are not healed, some people say you're not whole. There's so many different ways that you can describe it, but the at the end of the day, if you are dependent on somebody else to say complete me, then you are not healed. And thus, you will go into that next relationship and bleed on the next person. So we have to do a better job in uh, self-care, self-inventory to ensure that we don't bleed on the next person. We don't carry that luggage or that baggage to the next person. So that person that kind of came to your life for whatever reason doesn't deserve the mean-spirited talk that they may receive because of something that they have said that have triggered you. They don't really have nothing to do with that. So uh, that's why it's important that we take that self inventory, we do the self care, whatever is necessary, so we can heal, be complete. Because don't wait for anyone else to complete you; you should be complete already. I like it. I like that. I like that. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Any other? Our single folks want to chime in on that? Uh, self inventory before a relationship is definitely important, but it's just important overall. Always checking in with self, making sure that you, like you said, are healed for um, from past traumatic things and finding out if you don't know what those traumatic things are. Cause some people, you know, get triggered by things and don't know why and don't realize that it's a trauma from childhood, from this, that, and the third. So self check in period. It's something that I believe uh, we should always be a continuous self check in. Cause if you're not balanced within, you can't give nobody else nothing. Um, period. Uh, and as far as before a relationship, I think you should do a little extra self check in, especially within your within your life. Make sure that you have the space for a relationship. Are you going to be able to dedicate the time and energy that you, if you really want a real relationship and you want it to go somewhere and build upon it? Uh, making sure that you have that room in your life uh, to uh, show that much time, you know, put that much time and effort into it. I think uh, also uh, very important because, you know, nowadays we rush into things without making sure we actually have the capability and space in our lives to even take them on full, full throttle like we so-called want. Right, right. That's that's a good point. That's a good point. What about you, um, Ro? How are, are you taking self-inventory right now while you're single? Like, I know you were talking about what your needs are the last couple of episodes. So, so are you taking self inventory when it comes to self? Like, what do you need to be working on? Um, I am constantly evolving, recognizing my triggers. Um, I'm 
dealing with them, not saying that I'm totally healed from them, but I am dealing with them and because I recognize what does trigger me or um, what things I need to work on, I am more aware of what I say and what I do when I'm trying to get involved with somebody. The fact that I'm not trying to be in a relationship, it really doesn't matter right now. So it's all about me and what I'm wanting and what I'm trying to do and who I'm trying to become. So until I meet the person who actually makes me want to step up, because people say you have to be complete, yes, but there's always someone who comes into your life who makes you want to be a better you or better person. So that's why I'm saying you know, I'm trying to be a better person okay all right um yeah it won't um i'm sorry y'all i was trying to save to my to my page and try to do two three thousand things at once i'm sorry um so when it comes to those that are already in relationships what are y'all doing to take self inventory <clears throat> while you're in a relationship, because that's important too, for a relationship to thrive and to grow and to prosper, we have to constantly check in with ourselves. I know I do, to do that inventory and to say, hey, how can I make my relationship better? Or how can I, what can I do to improve me so that I can have a healthier relationship? So I know for me, like just making sure that I know what my needs are. Ro and I have been talking about this a lot lately. Like, what are my needs? What do I need out of my relationship? and being able to communicate those needs in a way that um, the person knows, like I have boundaries and I have certain expectations and I have certain things that I need for me to be happy. Um, but then knowing what those things are, like, what do I need to be happy? I need more communication. I need you to be honest. I'd rather you to be honest and blunt and tell me what you are giving me so that I can have the freedom to be able to um, make a decision for myself. Like if you are my partner and you're saying, this is what I need and this is the person that I am, I, I need you to be honest with me and tell me what that is so that I can make a decision whether I want to continue with this relationship or not. So honesty is really, really big for me. But then for me, it's just making sure I don't lose myself. I need right. to know what my needs are in a relationship so that I don't lose myself again. Because I felt like I lost myself. I need it. Three times. I love that, Tiff. Um, I was married. That was, that's not why we got a divorce, but one of my factors when I stepped out of the marriage was I had lost myself. I had given, 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 and he took, 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 took. Mm -hmm. I forgot about like everything I needed. I was so busy being a mom, so busy being a wife, so busy trying to be his best friend, so mm. busy trying to be his promoter, his manager, his support system, his everything. The stuff that they say we should do where they say black mm. women don't do it. Yes, we, yes, the hell we do. We do, we, we do. do. <laughs> yes, we the do. hell we do. Yes, mm -hmm. just wait a minute. Yes, the fuck we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they take advantage. Not all, some, and they don't value it enough. And mm -hmm. it can drain you and you will lose yourself. You will. Um, and I'm never going to say he didn't support the needs that I had when I had them, when I wanted to go back to school, he took care of the babies. They were babies. You know, he did everything that I needed him to do. His cheerleader. Never front like he wasn't, but his needs were a lot more than mine. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it can be very draining um, when you're over supportive sometimes, when you don't know how to be a true helpmate. Right. So right. when I walk into like relationships today, cause I'm like single, not really, but single, but kind of got a boo, but not really, but you know, I'd like fluctuate back and forth and then I bounce back and forth <laughs> to my ex and then I play <laughs> around with a new guy and then I still date somebody new. It doesn't really matter until somebody sparks my interest completely. And then I'll be monogamous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, had that conversation. Yep. So for me, um, what I do know is that this, and I'll get into that story, right? So mm -hmm. for me, the most important thing is finding a vibe, finding compatibility, finding common interests. Most of all, mindset and goals, because 
I'm at an age where we're not playing games anymore. Stability is huge. Um, mm -hmm. Freedom. I never thought I'd use that word the way that I use it today. Freedom, because I'm almost an empty nester. Freedom to go out, do my thing, and us have a ball. I do not like a restricted guy, right? So I need us to be on the same playing field. But we also understand what we need from one another. And is he ready? Is he scorned? Did his wife cheat on him? And he's like fearful, traumatized, mm. right? Has has these triggers that are like, oh, my ex wife. I dated a guy his nickname was Whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I dated a guy, his nickname, me and my friends called him Woe Is Me. Every conversation was that bitch, my baby mom. She took me for the it she he caught her cheating with a guy and in bed in his house. Oh, oh no. For a man, I think that's, that is that's, tremendous. Yeah, that is yes. Yes. you don't get oh, over it. No, and, no. And, and he <laughs> reacted. And so he lost everything because he reacted. He beat the guy up. He like got up. He choked her. He did what? Oh, rightfully God. so, just because anything could happen. So right? no, did nobody acknowledge the fact that she was? I, I don't want to use the f word. Effing another man in their right, house. In their right, right. And, and was there I no acknowledgement of that. What do you beat I can't up? imagine like walking in on some shit like that. Like, ain't no, no way. I'm. I'm. I'm I would. I just a wild out with my first husband. Who was yeah. in. A habitual cheater. I beat up every girl he touched that I found out about. So I can't even imagine. And that was in my twenties, you know. But I can't right. imagine like yeah. walking in on that. But dealing with him four years later now, y'all. Four years later, he did not get over it. He yeah. was. I mean, every how's your day going? It's good. This. Let me tell you what this motherfucking bitch did. Oh, every. Mm -hmm. day. It don't sound like he did no self-care and then self-inventory. Therapy in church, <laughs> council, therapy outside, like works out, goes to the gym in the morning, referees on the side, works full time, has a decent relationship with his kids. I don't know what else, what other kind of self-work you can do other than sitting your tail still in a room by yourself and crying for like a few weeks. Like, because I don't know what else would, for me, a good mm -hmm. cry. Like a good cry, a good shutdown for about a week. If I don't, anybody knows me, my bounce back game is strong. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bounce back in a day. I'm going on a date the next day. That's me. I can't, I will never coach someone the same way that I would, I would act. It's not necessarily the right thing to do. But for me, my bounce back game is strong. It doesn't mean that after that date the next day, I won't come home and cry at night, um, that I don't miss my ex or whatever the case may be. But for me, no. The story, really quick, y'all. So I get online, I'm online dating. Swipe, swipe or no swipey, swipe or no swipey, swipe or no, oh, swipe right. That's my high school boyfriend from Brooklyn, from Marcy Projects. He lives here in Charlotte, right? He lives in Indian Trail with his wife of like 20 years. And okay. so this is a 30 year history. 30 years ago, we dated. We dated in the eighth, ninth and 10th grade. Oh. Yeah, he was the first boy my mom caught me with in the house. Oh, like man. it was okay. a real, okay. real live relationship, right? So <laughs> I swipe right. Cause I'm like, I sent him a message and luckily we matched. And I was like, yo, what are you doing on here? Where is your wife? What are you, what, what is going on, Jerry? What's going on? Right. He was like, we got a divorce last year. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. No, it's cool, it's cool. Oh, well, I, I don't live in Indian Trail anymore. I just relocated to Charlotte. Where do you live? Lo and behold, we live in the same apartment complex. Oh. Right, coincidentally, so we're in the same housing project. Oh. And here we are pushing 50 in our same apartment complex. So then we start like hooking up last week, going, like meeting each other at the pool, then a the community room, like just sitting at the car in the parking lot. I ain't been to his house, he ain't been to my house, you know, and just talking, talking, talking. So last week he made a plan to go on a date. Oh, we gonna go out. I'm gonna take you out on Friday. Show me around. He doesn't go out. He doesn't really know Charlotte. He's an introvert. And I was like, I'll take, I'll find somewhere, you know, whatever. Cancels the date like two hours before. So that pissed. I have a pet peeve. Fred said, uh-oh, he's not active. That's that's what we keep saying. He, ain't act he isn't active, Fred. <laughs> you would be correct. <laughs> so he canceled the date. 
So then he apologizes. I'm so sleepy. I had this headache all day. So in a little bit of back history, he um, worked for Microsoft for like almost 20 years and he just got laid off. Great severance, high up on the ladder, but he's financially secure. But, you know, you're still in a little funk. Then his divorce, when you find out his wife got caught cheating with somebody in the same neighborhood. Oh, my God. He's got a lot going on. But that. Right. And then the family split. They got a 13 year old. Their 22 year old is like on a spectrum. So, you know, you got a kid with special needs. You have the 13 year old. The boys are split. It's like all this stuff. So lo and behold, he sets another date. So he canceled the first date because he was tired. He was tired. I got okay. He gets to see the other date and then cancels he doesn't even cancel he plays it off i was like mama cooked dinner i'm gonna do this blah 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 because your son is over there let me make your son some food this and this and this and that but we were we had plans to like go have ice cream or something hmm. can't doesn't even mention the ice cream i i said well this is the second day let me see if he cancels let me see if we're gonna go get ice cream so he in turn is not ready and not huh, and not ready for like any of that so then why that is someone who is not mature, dating. not ready, hasn't done the work to be prepared for dating. Right. Get your, and you know, I, and, and I cussed them out today. I'm sorry. I'm Forgive me. Look. I said, you need to get your ass together and get up off of those sites and like do some work alone. Deal with your kids. Go be active. You heard the word. Fred. I said, we already did. We just said strike one. Strike <laughs> one. He already got you know a strike again. Because you look good for 50. Go get rid of your stomach. Go to the gym. And one of my biggest healing processes when I was going through my divorce, you remember, Tiff, like I went through this huge like weight loss journey. Mm -hmm. I got a trainer. I was in the gym. You couldn't tell. You couldn't Mm -hmm. even talk to me because like I was in the gym in the morning. I was in the gym at night. I became a vegetarian. I like just inhaled vegetables. That's it. Right. 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 And that, that got my mind off of everything because I didn't give a fuck about anyone, especially my ex-husband. But I was doing my process of healing me. Right. And that's the biggest step when you're going into dating is to like heal you. Whatever you just went through, mm-hmm. as light as you may think it is, it's not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ro was saying that maybe that's the reason why she's been avoiding someone. But I don't, I don't think that's it. I think that you just know that he's not a good fit for you. So even though the sex is good, no, it's the, that's the one that the sex, the head oh. is amazing. Oh, the head What's is amazing. Oh, the head. Fuck crack. that head. I need penetration. Fuck that head. Fuck that's that. what oh, I'm saying. It just makes, oh. Every time I'm with him, it just makes me want to pick up the phone and call oh, somebody else. For one call somebody else. Find somebody with good dick. I'll take the head. Or get a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't beautiful people. I hate to interrupt, but I must bow out gracefully. Yes. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Fiona. We will see you on Saturday, ma'am. We cannot wait. Fiona. We will see you on Saturday. Everybody, make sure that you follow Fiona. Fiona, tell us your social media. You can find all social media platforms at (laughs) Fiona. Or under that is like Shrek, Fiona, like Shameless, Melanie, Fiona, whatever you need to relate it to to spell it correctly, please do so. Do so so you can find me. Y'all have a good night. Okay. All right, baby. Yeah, put your link in the chat, Fiona, before you go off so I can repost it for everybody to follow you. So this is Miss Fiona B. She's going to be out with us on Saturday. Um, She's going to open us up with one of her poems. Um, Come out and meet the beautiful Fiona. She is single, y'all. She is single, y'all. So Fiona is single. Those two free tickets that Mr. Fred is giving, make sure you reach out to me, fellas, so that you can come meet Miss Fiona. And come meet the rest of the ladies of the private room. Um, thank you, Miss Fiona, and we will see you on Saturday. Peace out. Bye, baby. <laughs> so th- that that lends me to self inventory when you're in poly relationships. Like, how do you, if you're already in a nesting partner relationship, like Barry and Tiffany, how do you do that self inventory to prepare to bring on another partner? I'm curious about that. So you're already in a relationship, but now you're considering dating other people what's what's your inventory process for prepare dating other people in addition question. to your nest how do you prepare to get ready for your nesting situation i think for me um well me and my <laughs> we had initially started out monogamously um 
and then we both after having like a a really deep conversation we realized that we we're both polyamorous so um throughout the years we tried the triad we tried the open relationship we tried dating separately um but I think as far as self-inventory, it takes self-awareness, some level of self-awareness to know if and what needs to be worked on within ourselves. Um, the beautiful thing about having a nesting partner and identifying things that need to be worked on is having your partner with you to work on it with. So it's like a level of growing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's ironic because him and I are in that realm right now in our relationship going into eight years. So, because over time people change, they evolve, they grow. So um, your needs change, your desires change, your wants change. Um, when it comes to finding outside partners, I can't really speak for him, but for me, um, especially because I'm on a healing journey right now, I look for people who have a deep understanding of things like I do. Um, that's compatibility to me, chemistry. Um, I can't just deal with someone because, you know, they got it going on. You know what I mean? They have to have some level of depth to them um, because I have healed quite a bit from some past traumas. Um, and I've gotten really good at figuring out when I'm triggered and what to do about it so that I don't take it out on the person that I'm closest to. Okay. But that's a lot of therapy. Yeah, so your self inventory for you personally is making sure that you know what your triggers are, making sure that you're in a place of healing where you can't accept. Mm -hmm someone else into your life is that kind of your process yeah yeah and like I told him <laughs> literally last night I told him I said you know I think I'm gonna take a step back or take a break from seeking up another partner and kind of just let it organically happen mm -hmm. because I feel like if it's an organic meaningful relationship then it's something that'll last and that's what I'm about I'm looking for yeah. longevity I'm not looking for a fly by night hey, come knock my back out type thing. Right. You know what right. I mean? Um, right. A lot of people will but be like, yeah, but if you already have that in your nesting partner, why, why, why don't you just be single? Because like, I let, I love telling people this <laughs> and I used to tell it all the time on my podcast is when you have one partner, that one partner cannot give you a hundred percent of what you want. It's in, like, it's, it's not humanly possible because then you would have the idea of, perfection in someone so there's needs and wants that I can't give him and there's needs and wants that he's just not capable of giving me so to find another partner who can give me that is extra mm -hmm. but I'm willing to give them the same I get that I give to him you see what I mean yeah no I totally get it um so we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna come back to that because Ro, Ro said no. I, I think that somebody can give you everything that you need. So when it comes to you and your partner being in a polyamorous relationship, you have your own self inventory, but then you have a couple's inventory. It sounds like as well, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, is your plus one available? Is he joining he's, us tonight? He's not. He's actually still working. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. So he said he apologized. We wanted to give him here a tonight. Yeah. Okay. He tried to get off early. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So Barry, for you, I see it. Yeah. Um, Barry, for you, what is your process when it comes to self inventory? Because you're polyamorous as well. Um, what is your self inventory process um, for you as an individual? And then I know that you just added a nesting partner. So how do you do your self inventory before you start a new relationship? And then do you do the same thing as Tiffany does? Talk to your partner before you go into another relationship. How does that? How does that go? Um, with within my relationships, um, okay, a couple of different questions. So I'm, I'm trying to keep up right now. But, so your uh, own self inventory. Let's start there. When you are 
doing your own self inventory? What is that process for you? For me, um, I started that journey about 10 years ago and learned to love myself. So self inventory has become a daily thing for me as opposed to, oh, I went through a breakup. Now I'm going to take self inventory. Um, now it's just something I live with and I work through every day and I try to stay on top of it. Not that I don't make mistakes and, you know, go down rabbit holes. But for the most part, I learned not to wait until, um, you know, in a bad spot. So like, oh, now I need to heal. I'm trying to keep myself healed, keep my head above water, stay, you know, stay in love with myself. Life is beautiful. You know, sometimes if I need to, I'll just walk outside and look at a tree like, wow, that tree is beautiful. You know, there's so many positives in life and we find ways of looking for negatives. And for me, it's about staying positive and, and focusing on the beautiful things in my life and what is going right. And, yeah. uh, and I, I'm also the type of person when it, when it does come to relationships, if things are not working out, I, I can turn the light switch off and, and walk. I don't, I don't cry very much anymore. Like I've, I've been there. I've, yeah. um, I've, you know, I've been hurt. I've let it affect my life. And in other words, I'm in love with myself. I'm, I'm good. I am whole all by myself if I have to be. Because mm-hmm. not very many people can say that. Good for mm-hmm. you. I was going to say, you know, one of the, one of the things that um, is good about a poly type relationship is you can use your poly partner sometimes as a sounding board. Um, you know, if if they're co- consistently telling you, hey, you know, you are, you know, attack me or whatever, or you are sounding like, woe is me, like, you know, she was saying, then, you know, take that. Take that, you know, not as an attack, but as something that you can learn from and you can get better at. And if you have yeah, learning tools. Mm-hmm. transparent communication, then you will respect what that person said and know that they're coming from a place of love and not uh, your enemy. And and when you look at it like that, you know, you receive it better and, and you ask, okay, you know, that doing a check-in, am I, am, I, or am I better? Am I better, you know, this time than I did last time? And, and I'm sure, you know, they will give you some honest and uh, transparent feedback. Okay, so yeah. I want to say what, um, what Tiffany was saying when she said that I disagree. So the reason why I said I disagree that your partner can't be all the things that you need is because it just depends on your partner. If your partner's needs are simple, Mm -hmm. it may be, you know, as easy as one, two, three to meet all that it needs to be everything that they need and want you and need you to be. But if you're a person who has a list of things or it's a certain way that you want things done, then yeah, it may be a problem with your mate being able to complete, I mean, not complete, but to meet all of the needs that you have or be everything um, you need them to be. That's number one. Number two, um, my friend was sitting there talking about um, how when you get with somebody and they take yourself, like asking questions as far as, is it something I did this or did you do that? What I find myself is like with, with my ex so when I started my healing process, I wanted to talk to my exes just to see, like, um, why y'all, like, because every man I've been with has always cheated on me, okay? Every man. It's not been one in my life that has not cheated on me. Mm. So, so I wanted to know, like, not blaming myself, but is it something that I did or I'm continuously doing that is making them want to cheat. Now I know that, you know, people cheat because that's what the fuck they want to do. <laughs> but I'm just saying like as a human and knowing that, you know, I'm not perfect. So it may be something that, you know, I may be doing or not doing that causes them to step out. And the thing that I found is every time I ask somebody that, they always told me, no, well, it wasn't you. So it's like, okay, well, if it's not me, what am I taking self inventory on as far as my relationships? Because if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing according to the people I've been in relationships with, then it's like I know personal things I have to work on, but not as a relationship to work on. So can I add to that? Mm-hmm. So being that all of the people that you've had relationships with have cheated on you, 
but they're telling you that you have not done anything specifically. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, what are those things in those men that attracted you to them? Because it might be that you're attracted to a certain kind of man who I'm has my daddy. That was just to say, it is not this, but your choice. Right. Yeah. I'm so attracted it might be to guys who you're attracted to. I'm attracted to guys who remind me of my daddy. And was when I say this, huh? Was your was dad it, a cheater? No. My, that's why I'm like, it's certain aspect. Like my dad is a manly man. And mm -hmm. I know he's probably done a whole bunch of shit wrong, but me as his daughter in the 46 years I've been here, I've never seen my daddy out of pocket. I've never seen him yell at his wife. I've never seen him neglect his children. I've never seen him, you know, basically raise his voice to any of his friends. Like my dad has literally been the perfect man. And when I say I choose men that are like my father, because I like men who are manly men, like my dad likes, likes to, alpha males. Yeah, alpha males. Like, yeah. My dad likes, mm -hmm. like I said, he likes to hunt and fish. So when I meet a man who's like, oh, I like to go fish and I like to go hunting, to me, that's like, to me, that symbolizes being able to provide for me. Because if it goes down, he know how to go out here and get us food and provide for us. My dad has been the type of man that always worked. So men that I get with, I find that they have job nine to five jobs where they actually work hard with their hands is not sitting behind a desk and mentally being tired, but physically. Ooh, she like active like, men. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Active yeah. men. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not, but I, it's like, I get the good qualities of my dad, but I get the fucked up qualities of who they are as a person. Like the man is as a person. Well, but do you ever ask the question, have you ever cheated on your exes before? Do you ask that question? Like, have you ever, are you, do you have a... So yeah, like, you have those but that doesn't things. necessarily mean that they'll cheat on you because I'm a person who literally used to cheat on everybody when I was like wasn't married. Mm -hmm. I would cheat like I'll have five six dudes at one time. Mm -hmm. But once I decided and made up in my mind that I wanted to be loyal and faithful to my husband and wanted to be in a monogamous relationship, I didn't fuck around on neither mm -hmm. one of my husbands. Mm -hmm. Even though they did stuff to me and mm -hmm. all my friend girls was like, girl, you need to go get you some side. No, mm -hmm. I made up in my mind that. I want to be faithful. I want to be with him and him only. So just because you cheated on people before doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're going to do again. What? I mean, history does. Yeah. I mean, no, I believe that. No, no. I, I believe that people change and there is a someone for yeah. someone else. It doesn't always mean you will get a different reaction out of every person. Every relationship is not going to yeah. mirror the last different women do different things for men so what he did with one woman he may not do with the next that i don't believe that all men are always going to be the same I, yeah, I, don't, I don't believe that every man every person that she said i've cheated before does that mean i'm going to cheat my next one no but if that is my pattern of cheating on everybody that i'm with then you can pretty much bet yeah. that they have a high potential for cheating and don't most men that do that are not going to come to the table and be like well you know what? I cheated on this chick, this chick, the last one, my baby yeah, mom. That, that's that, what you're saying. Be honest. Well, well, be honest. And then I found that most men that do cheat in relationships don't have a good example of a relationship. Yeah. It's like that they're they family. your pattern seeker. Yeah, right. They like so when you say you, their family all cheated on their wives mm -hmm. or they're cheating or you know, boy, you know that's just a man's nature that you know what I'm saying. You yeah. have five, six different. Yeah. I feel like that because nobody is. Telling these young men, there are, I ain't saying all, don't get me wrong, some good men out there. I'm not saying it's about all men, but I feel like if you as a man don't hold your friends or your family members as men accountable mm -hmm. for certain things, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. So yeah, go ahead and do it. Like, you know, that your, your cousin's wife is faithful to her and, you know, a good wife and all of these, but you stepping out on her. I feel like the men in the family should be like, bro, you got a good woman right. over there. You right. shouldn't be doing, you know, treating her like that or doing like that. But because everybody like, hell yeah, she got a fat ass. Too. <laughs> Go for it. Then it's like, they do. <laughs> but bro, I would just say just real quick, just because um, I hate that you feel that way, especially after just going through a divorce. One, take a look at your patterns. Two, take a look at your type. Sometimes you have to waver from a particular look a particular thing there's nothing wrong with wanting an alpha i gotta tell you that because i'm in and i don't know if there's a such thing but i am definitely a powerful woman i don't my brother coaches me all the time stop fucking saying you're an alpha woman like but i'm definitely very close 
because I've always maintained a lot of strength in my family, with my mother, taking care of my brothers, making sure my kids are straight. I've always been the stronger person, a lot of times even in my relationship. But mm -hmm. I do know that I am not compatible with a beta or a sigma. I've tried it. I've tried to step out of that. And my personality is just way too strong. Yes, um, I, I'm with you, Makisha. I'm the same way. But I'm I'm more of an alpha female and like everyday. And that's why you seek an alpha same. male. You just have to seek a very, a very stable and controlled alpha male. That is, yeah, I don't have a problem being submissive to like being gentle. That's not what's gonna make a man cheat. It don't a nigga don't care if you submissive or not. No, no, I was that. just saying, I was just saying that because even though I'm such a raw person, <laughs> like I do know how to be they don't um, care about that because I'm a very nurturing person. And depending on how you carry your leadership in my relationship, I'm extremely submissive because I love to yep. fucking let go of all of yep. my control. Yep. If I, I know that here, here you go. Yeah. There you go. That's me. Yeah, that's me. You know, I'm not letting go of my control if I can't trust you. If you can't handle your money, what the fuck am I gonna let you handle my money for? Like, that, if that, you that, don't know how that. to make decisions, why the hell am I gonna let you make a decision? Like, right, and I right, know how right. to make good decisions. Um, right. So I'm not gonna let you flop and fail and fuck me over. Like, that's just I'm too old for that. That's for starters, because I've been there before. Um, but submissive, that's one thing that has nothing to do with infidelity. That is not what a, if a man is gonna cheat, he's gonna cheat. It doesn't matter. You don't necessarily control that climate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always remember that. That's just in his makeup. So you might need a more settled alpha, maybe someone older who is settled minded mm -mm. and like older. Older. <laughs> and believes. <laughs> no, older is okay. No, I I know because we talked about older the last podcast, right? Uh -huh. Older guys are not what is it, Fred? What is it? I that. <laughs> that's not a part of me. And I love older <laughs> men. You know, there, there's 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 a lot of wisdom in an older guy, but um, mm -hmm. I'd prefer men of my age. And you know, I'll tango with somebody that's younger if he stands to be mature. That's super yes. important. Maturity and being stable and settle minded is important. He can't be out in the club. Not that I ain't out in the club, but I mean, he can't be outside and wilding and all this. He can't be slinging his dick everywhere. I'm not interested in that. But what you say? What you say? <laughs> um, okay, so this is good stuff. So uh, when you're single, 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 you're telling you taking self inventory on like, what do I need to do? better in my relationship but then you have to also look at your patterns yeah, i really yeah, think that's yeah. important patterns and you have to look at your patterns um but i tell you i went the opposite i usually from 16 up until 40 i dated older men always when i turned 40 for some reason i started dating younger men because i feel like i'm a younger 40 i feel like i'm very active i'm out i'm doing my events i want somebody that can dance with me party with me do stuff with mm -hmm. me we can travel so forth and so on so i lean towards younger now that i'm over 40. um but i also realized that even though i consider myself a very strong alpha woman i leave my house you know very well i'm also very i can submit to someone that i can Trust, trust with my I can trust I have to be able to trust you like you said Makisha and so I know that I do like strong men but I also need a, a strong man that can also keep up with my lifestyle that can enjoy my lifestyle that's not a jealous person because me and jealousy don't work very well I'm I not with that person. I can be with someone and watch him flirt with someone else I can watch him date mm -hmm. other people because I'm very confident in that respect but I need, just need you to be honest and respectful yeah. So I need that. And so I'm taking those self inventories for myself. And then it sounds like I'm that are in relationships that are open to polyamorous relationships. You're not only having to take self inventory of self, but you also as a couple have to take inventory because whether you are in a triad or whether y'all date together or you live together, a that triad. other person, no matter what, is still going to affect your relationship, even if y'all are not dating that person together. Is that the right the right thing to Tiffany I would say yeah yeah, yeah. and I think so the positive out of it is is the confidence that it builds too right because you do want to reward yourself when you you finally get it you right. don't want to 
just kind of like let it oh I got it you want to yeah. be able to reward yourself so the confidence is definitely something that mm-hmm. I have found for myself mm-hmm. um through my journey but um I'm also in a space where it's I'm, I'm becoming more introverted I guess mm-hmm. and like I said before I'm not really looking to find a partner however mm-hmm. I'll be supportive of my Come partner yeah. if and when he finds another partner right um you know what I mean because ultimately I don't own him and he doesn't own me and I just want him to be happy and feeling fulfilled just like he wants me to be happy and feeling fulfilled right right yeah and I think for me when you know um my current home you know dynamics is that we are co-parenting successfully. We are, you know, working on trying to um, co-parent successfully, live under the same roof successfully, still have um, a relationship, marriage successfully. However, we are giving each other the room to be able to still um, date other people, to still go out with other people, to still meet other people, because that is what I need for my comfort level, that if we're going to co-parent and we've decided that this is the way we're going to move forward um, with our children, because we think it's very important for our children, um, is that we are able to be respectful of what the other person's needs and give them that space and that individuality to have that relationship, whatever that they need. But Mm -hmm. with honesty, with respect, and with communication. Um, And so that's where, you know, my current dynamic is. This is what I need for me. I'm communicating that to you, whoever my potential partner is. And if you can work within those, my needs, then you tell me your needs. If I can work within your needs, then we can make it happen. Um, And then I know for you, yours is really about, you know, self-care and just really knowing are you healed? Are you, do you have any baggage that you're bringing into the relationship that I need to know about? But then also being aware of yourself, like, do I have any baggage? Do I have anything that I need to work out before I get into something new? And then she just wants sex three times a week. That's her prerequisite. That's what she needs. So she knows that when she meets someone, oh, you me. you and for real, and you'd be surprised at how many people be like, yeah. And then when they figure out what they got to do them three times a week, it's right. like, damn, I don't know. I don't, you just got to get your wigs up. Boy. I'm just trying to figure out how, what, what is it with men that can't That's have, what, what kind of guy mm-hmm. you want to have sex three times a week? What, what kind of men are you meeting that don't want to have sex three times a week? I don't have time. Yeah. Okay. Um, I run businesses. I'm doing this, so I don't have time. Then the other one is a work conflict schedule. Like I'm here, they're right. there, and then the other one, like I said, I had sex with them four days in a row, and I was sexually frustrated. Oh, so no. it's like, no, I don't. Think, I don't. I'm gonna say this. I don't think it's the gender men. I think it's the the men that you are choosing to be with. That's what it is. I'm gonna have to agree, and I've been going younger because you know I you think they not, have. Not but it's not. It's, it's not. The type of quality of man that you're choosing, your dating pool has to expect. I don't want to date. I just no, want to no, no, have sex three times. She, she doesn't want to date. She just wants pool, to have sex three times. But where, regardless <laughs> of what you want to call it, your Look at Bakisha, company Bakisha, Bakisha, of Bakisha, you're men, talking, but you're on mute. We can't hear the anything. Your you're saying. Men, you expect. Wherever you get them from, you need to close that and go somewhere else. <laughs> but that's the thing for me. I don't. I don't go. I like, if it's not work related, like me going out to do, like, you know, yeah. shows and stuff like that, I am at hell. I am such a, like, people think I'm such a. And it's so man, hard to meet somebody that, unless somebody hooks you up. I don't, like, really, I don't go out. And then places that I do go out to, I wouldn't dare talk to none of them motherfuckers in there because they mostly thugs or drug yeah. dealers or. You know what I'm saying? So my problem is I need to be out. <laughs> you only need the wood. So what does that matter what they do? And they don't be th- I don't want to be, be with you and have to worry about the police pulling us over. I don't have to. Uh, you know, you know, I just said I ain't met a dope boy in like 20 years. Where did you meet? Where did you, where you be meeting drug dealers? <laughs> I don't ever meet them. Say that again. We didn't hear that. We didn't hear the question. I 
I said, where do you meet dope boys at? Because I haven't met any in like 20 years. And I've been in Charlotte 50 years. So, I haven't met any. So um, when you host certain events, you mostly get in track dudes. When, um, that's, so that's I've where- I've been going out here for 10 years. But that might not be the crowd that comes out to my events. Because I definitely cater to older folks. But I, I've never, I've not been hit on by a drug dealer in years. Ears. It's not that I'm gonna tell you, it's no real. Right. It ain't no real. No, I'm serious. It's either athletes or like musicians or corporate America. There's no real. No, 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 this younger generation, no, that. that's not real dope dealing. That's part time. <laughs> yeah. No, they go for backwards now. Those are corner boys. Um, right. the, uh, the, the opinions of our panelists are not the opinions <laughs> of. <laughs> I've never dated a corner boy. <laughs> We're about to do a disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> um, a Barry. I don't do. The, I don't do drugs. Barry, no, do you have drugs. one of your nesting partners with you? Yeah, actually, two. One of them just walked inside, but uh, my baby girl Anita okay. sitting beside me tonight, and Vanessa was sitting right across from us, and she went into the house for a little bit. It, yeah, it might. We we have a little echo somewhere. Okay, so Barry, can I ask your partner? Never have a shirt on. Is it Marquisha? Some, somebody's echoing. Not me. It, it, yeah, because that's one of you. Are we echoing for y'all? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, you're out. Are you out? It might be me. Okay, let me get out of, let's see if that helps. That's Does that help? Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. Great. Can we ask your partner for her? It's still echoing. I don't know why it's echoing. Um, what was your self inventory going into this, this relationship? What was your self inventory going into a relationship that already was established? So for me, I, before I even met them, um, I had just gotten out of a five year relationship. Um, so I really was focused on me. I wasn't focused on anybody else. I like, I moved into my own place, head down, focused on myself. Like, I wasn't focused on anybody else. I was just going to work, coming home, focused on me, my dog. That was it. Wasn't, I didn't look at anybody else. I didn't acknowledge anybody else. I've been in my own, class, my own world um, for months. Like, I didn't really know anyone else existed. Like, could I ask who, who lived next to you? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I literally did not acknowledge other people didn't know anyone else existed because I was focused on me. I wanted to get myself better. I wanted to grow, learn to love myself again, learn to understand myself again, be better with myself because those five years took a toll on me and I had to relearn and regrow and just take it all back to the beginning and get it all better again. And I did, and I was better. And once I got better, I got my head up and I looked and I was like, oh, there's people here. Okay. You know, I had neighbors. I was like, oh shit, there's people. So once I got to that point, I looked around and I was like, oh, hello. There's a world around me. And, you know, I was like, oh, I have a neighbor over here, a neighbor over here and whatever, whatever. But it took me a couple of months. I had to get better with myself and learn myself over all over again and really just just learn myself over. like I didn't take like I didn't force it I didn't you want to talk to can y'all hear us yeah it's but yeah we can hear you okay okay good I got a question so were you the neighbor yes I was the neighbor yeah so Barry you're dating your neighbor right now um, I was checking her out for months, walking across the yard with her head down. Talking about, but uh, actually, oh, she, I missed that little nugget. So, <laughs> she, 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 
She lives with us. Rose said that's too close. We we started dating as neighbors and then she she moved in with us. What you was going to ask? Wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute. Fred said yesterday. Y'all started dating yesterday? No. no. I said oh. she she started out as my neighbor and then eventually she moved. I didn't see her name. What's what's her name? I'm sorry, I missed her name. Anita. 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 I like that. So wait a minute, Barry. You got so let let's get a count here. Um, so you got Vanessa and she's Caucasian, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, I'm over and then here. you have Miss Anita right here. Yes. yes. Oh, which was and she's African American. <laughs> yes. Okay, and then I thought I, I thought I saw another African American lady. No, just me. Uh, there, so, there's only there, two. There was one before, and that that relationship has ended. And here's Vanessa. If you hear the same question, Tiffany. Hi, Vanessa. Hey, Vanessa. Okay. Hi. See, I just want to make sure because I be high most of the time, so I wanted to make sure I had to count right and got everybody straight. Damn! Wait a minute, Marquisha. Who was that sexy chocolate behind you? All of that. <laughs> Damn! I ain't, I ain't missed out. All of that. I missed it. Oh, I can't even see. Super healthy and active, by the way, he mentioned. You got any, you got any brothers? Um, <laughs> Are your brothers? You know. He got cousins. Got he got cousins. Are faithful. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about faithful. Exactly. They can have sex three, a, they can have sex three times a week. I'm a, I'm a do the cousins are you doing? Good? And he chocolate too, Makisha. And he chocolate and fine. Mm, chocolate. Mm. Mm. And and the cousins, they look like him too, right? The cousins look like you too, right? <laughs> okay, they I do. They do. Six they do. one. <laughs> I need to be six one and above. <laughs> Look about 185. They his height. They his height. Do I need to mention his height? Y'all don't solve the problem. You don't solve the problem. I've stepped outside of my box and did five three. Oh, you stepped outside of your box and did five wood. I don't do five anything ever. Five three, and I'm five ten. No, no man. No. I try not, (laughs) but see, I didn't want to be shallow. You know, they say you're supposed to date outside your box. Oh, I did. (laughs) <laughs> Didn't I tell you last week so six did. two and above? <laughs> I have rules. Oh my god! Six two is short for him because he's like six seven, six six. Ooh, Wait, yeah, six seven. Yeah, my ex husband was six yes. six. So yo, mm-hmm. yes, you can just climb, climb. Up you up ain't got to climb. I'm telling you, when you five ten and they six six, it's the right. Position, right size, tight wallet. Here, Brendan, in his little towel around his waist. <laughs> mm. You're not nasty. Come back to the camera with the towel and make sure you drop it. <laughs> <laughs> don't step him because he's fresh. <laughs> All right, y'all. We didn't had a good conversation tonight, and I don't know why I'm echoing. So I hope that this is not sounding weird. But we talked about self inventory. And that it is imperative, it is important, it is crucial that you do self-inventory on yourself first. And if you are in, I don't know why it's echoing, it's driving me crazy. But if you are single, single, make sure you're doing that self-inventory to find out first, what do you need for yourself? What do you need for yourself? And then how do you communicate your needs to somebody else to see if they are able to deal with what you need. And hopefully that hopefully that other person has done self-inventory so that they can communicate with you what those are so that you can see if y'all are compatible. Mm-hmm. Is, is that if you're in a relationship or a situationship, or an entanglement, whatever you want to call it, whether you're having sex three days a week or not, Entanglement. This is what five is my she, preference. Is five. Said. Three is not the magic number. Three is when you get old. What you say, Morkisha? 
Three is when you get old. Five is the magic number. Five to no, seven. No, 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 no. I said that's the least. That's the minimum. That's the minimum. Oh. Because I can't handle three. It's like that. I'm frustrated and angry. It's in a mean Texas. Yeah. Three times in a day. You, hell yeah. When you wake up in the morning, when you get home, and before you go to sleep at night. Man, Wash your face, go to bed, take a shower, sex. I just like what you can just like a lot of switch just in <laughs> and I want to Miss Anita. Miss Anita. That's a lot. Anthony has a question. Hey. <laughs> yes, what's the question? Hey, how was that process when you went from that to get back to yourself out of that relationship? Who are you talking uh, to? Anita. Miss Anita. She my oh, okay. I focus on myself. I just literally just focused on making sure that I was making sure I was okay in, internally like was I literally okay inside like mentally emotionally I wasn't letting what happened to me and everything that I went through beating me down inside like I wasn't letting that keep me down like I was like you know what what I went through I'm not gonna let it keep me down like it was bad but I'm not gonna let it keep me there like I went through some shit but I'm not gonna let that oh can I cuss sorry mm -hmm. yeah I'm like I'm like, <laughs> like look sure. but I went through that but I'm not gonna like let it keep Zuko sorry my dog all right hey hey real talk so, I, I ain't gonna conversation be tonight I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, sexual oh, no, chocolate. My bad. I, I ain't doing too much. I just want to say that's honorable. And shout out to OG right there. That's an honorable man. Because in that kind of relationship, when you come out of something like that, it could really damage you. And then to have to go through the process of building that trust and that love back up like that, that's real. You know what I'm saying? It builds character, of course. He's trying world. to get there. He's just trying to convince me. He's trying to get there. Okay, so I need you to bring him to the event. I ain't got time for that. But I'll like, not, very you know, definitely. I don't want to do too much. He's not able to make it. He's not going to be able to make it. He's 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 going my Monday. Oh. Who might pull up though? Yeah, that's a thing, I think it's on Thursday for the whole weekend. For real, for real. And so I give me the information. I might pull up in the homies. Let me go, man. Honorable, my mouth. Right, nobody I know. Just know that when you bring someone on the private room, they become everybody's man or woman. So I'm just like, you know. oh, I don't share. Wait now. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ain't see my it's face. I don't want to share my facial. I want the cousin or the brother. Okay. Y'all ain't yeah. see I, want you. I can't do Polly because I'm selfish. Tiffany, if you bring your partner with you on Saturday, just letting you know that he's everyone's boyfriend on Saturday. Just on Saturday. Oh, he'll he'll be ravishing in it. He'll love it. <laughs> That's how I made it. Are you with the Caucasian list. male or are you with I don't um, do the Pink Panther, no. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> never have, never will. It's disgusting. I thought I was no offense, Barry. I love you. Oh, I got this. Barry not gonna be here. Oh, I did Barry's a shot this coming. weekend. Look, because I used to drink Jagermeister, so I was at my friend's cookout. <laughs> Wait, no, just chocolate. Damn. And Barry, he won't come for us. Nope. Yeah, I gotta wait. <laughs> All right, y'all. So I said that I was going to announce the topic for Saturday. I'm going to be honest. I have no idea what the topic is for Saturday. So there I were so many like good topics morning. on. Yeah. yeah. There were so many good topics. It was. And I can't decide which one. So we're going to vote on it tonight. We're going to vote on it tonight. And I'll announce it tomorrow. Um, so make sure that y'all are following us on Facebook and Instagram, the private room with Tiffany for the topic for Saturday. Um, we have two sponsored tickets. So if you want to be there, if you want to be a guest, if you want to get on the conversation, if you want to come party with us, have a couple drinks, then you have to reach out to me. Personal, Fred said it. You have to personally reach out to me. 
So even if you comment on the thread, that's not a personal no, interest. No. no, you have, you have, to, you have, to, you have to DM. Have to DM. It has to be a personal conversation where you say, why do you want to come? That's the stipulation. You have to message me privately and tell me why you want to come. Not why you want to come to bed, but why you want to come to bed. <laughs> but if you want to come, come, if you want to tell us how you come, come. how you come, how hard you come, message me privately. Tell me that you want to be there. Two tickets, free tickets, sponsored by her. Okay. You gonna close this out? Thank y'all for coming out. God bless you. Good night. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you for being on with us tonight. Hi, everybody. Daddy. 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 Daddy.